Hello friends, welcome to the introductory session on the subject data science and visualization. The subject code is 21 CS 644. Hi, I am Sandeep, welcoming you to this session. Let's uh, look at uh, what we are going to study in this subject, what is hidden in this subject, data science and visualization. We begin this course with a module number one with an introduction to data science and then getting to the second module we look at various uh, steps involved in exploring the data and analyzing the data and then look at what the data science process is then in the third module the data as it is cannot be used directly so we need to convert the available data into some features so we need to check at the various uh, steps involved in generating these features and when the features are generated there may be some redundant features which are affecting our uh, computation so that may create a delay in the computation or they require more uh, memory so additional features definitely would uh, degrade our uh, process uh, both in time as well as space so the only option we have is to select the necessary features and uh, leave the redundant ones so these all the issues we look at the third module coming to the module number four here we see the importance of visualization of the data as long as the data is in the numeric form and the data is of bigger size then it doesn't make any sense we can't understand what the data is trying to express so the easiest way is to put that in the graphical form so if we can make uh, some arrangement so that we can visually see what the data is conveying then definitely the things become simpler and uh, what the data is conveying the message comes directly to us and to do this we need some visualization techniques so we look in various uh, visualization techniques that are uh, possible and that will be available to use and uh, make the analysis easier and we look at the various uh, data exploration techniques and all these things in the fourth module and finally whatever we have studied in these fourth, uh, four modules we want to put to the real time work so we need uh, some tool to really look at and uh, work on that and the tool here we are uh, using is a uh, matplotlib so in the fifth unit we dive deep into matplotlib and see the various uh, functions available in this uh, matplotlib and all the functions we just uh, look at them and see how each one helps us at a different situation to understand the data to understand the hidden meaning of the data and then come out with uh, some meaningful work so let's get into little detail now see what uh, model one contains the model one is uh, titled introduction to data science so here we begin with uh, understanding what data science is and then we try to look at big data that is so data which is very huge in size and then we look at the process called datafication and uh, what are the various uh, techniques available for uh, this is what uh, is the study next then 
the various uh, skill sets required to work with the data we are going to list out here and then we work with the uh, statistics so here statistics uh, is uh, a wonderful tool in understanding uh, numbers and understanding data in understanding and differentiating various uh, situations so here we study what statistics is all about and the statistics uh, basically deals with the population that is the actual data and then samples so when we are uh, working with the data that uh, data is of very huge size so we cannot use the whole data and uh, work on that what we can do is some samples of the data can be collected and then verify it it's an example if you are cooking uh, some amount of rice you don't have to check every seed of the rice whether it is cooked or not so one or two seeds you can just take it and uh, find whether it's cooked or not so that's uh, what uh, we are trying to convey here no need to work with the whole population just a sample can be used to get the information and this all are possible through uh, techniques called statistics so after uh, having a uh, initial idea about the statistics now let us uh, get into building a statistical model which fits our data so a uh, data whatever data we have if we can give a mathematical uh, structure to that then instead of a uh, big uh, millions of data we can just uh, put that in one expression a mathematical expression or some parameters so that uh, a similar data can be reproduced for further use and all that so there the statistical model comes to our aid then when you are working on the data and if you try to understand how the data is distributed we realize that uh, majority of the data available for our usage are distributed in some few known formats so if we can study these known formats of distribution and then parameterize them then in future if any of the data we are working if it uh, fits to any of the known distributions then whatever uh, information whatever uh, um, computations we had done with our old models the same information same techniques can be forwarded to this current model so the process becomes little simpler and uh, one side the other side if you are trying to compare uh, two set of data each set of data may be having millions of uh, uh, data then it becomes difficult to compare the two data sets each containing millions of data and the best option is try to find the distribution of them and if the distribution max almost then we can say that the two data sets are derived from the same situation or if it is not derived from the same situation then definitely the distributions will never match so that's a, some easier techniques we have to uh, distinguish between the data sets and to identify the data sets to uh, talk more in detail about the data sets we uh, get the help of uh, probability distributions once we know about the data once we know that the data can be modeled in a statistical form then what is required is to create that model from the data so this process is what we call fitting a model so here 
the data is used to create the model model here is a mathematical expression or a mathematical model and uh, for the known data the model is created and in future for any unknown data using this model we can get the answers so that's all are there in this first uh, module getting into second module which uh, is mainly trying to explore the data and analyze it and uh, tell us what the data science process is so here we begin with the basic tools of exploratory data analysis then we look at uh, various philosophy of uh, eda then we see the data science process in detail and uh, we look at uh, some case studies then we go into something called machine learning algorithms so we begin with the basic uh, machine learning algorithms and in this uh, we basically are interested in looking in three types of uh, algorithms one is for uh, linear regression other is uh, k nearest neighbors and third one is k means of which the first two belong to one category called supervised learning whereas the third one belongs to the category called unsupervised learning so in essence the machine learning algorithms can be divided into three categories supervised unsupervised and reinforcement learning here these three examples are uh, talking about the first two supervised and unsupervised so first and second examples are for supervised learning and the third one k means is unsupervised learning so the more details we find when we dig into the second module now getting into the third module we have data we basically a big data large volume of data is available and just looking at this large volume of data so to give an uh, example uh, or to give uh, what a big data may look like so this is something like a tabular uh, form and this table may consist of hundreds of columns each column talks about one uh, parameter and uh, there will be some millions of rows each row represents one situation or one data so there are hundreds of uh, parameters and there is there are millions of data available so you can visualize that the table is of size uh, million diva, million by 100 or so and so much of numbers are there in your data set and uh, if you just look all around you see only numbers 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 doesn't make any sense unless until you do some extra work on that and that extra work is extracting meaning from the data in extracting meaning from the data we need to do some extra work and what all extra work we need to do is what we are looking in this so here we just look at a uh, how the features can be generated from the given data the hundreds of columns whatever we said may be directly useful or some time these columns may not be directly useful in that case we need to combine the columns and try to get uh, some additional results and all that so that so uh, what is called a feature generation here we need to do brainstorming then we need to check how the domain experts are useful and what are the roles played by the domain experts and uh, what if domain experts are not available what are the problems we face all these details we look for and a uh, place for imagination and all that we look in once these uh, features are generated again there there is possibility that uh, we become too much enthusiastic in uh, creating these features and uh, 
unknowingly we create uh, too many number of features and that in turn may harm uh, the overall situation so to keep that in line what we can do is we need to remove the unwanted features so one option is remove the unwanted features or from the feature set select what are the features useful for our next work so there are various algorithms available so here we look at the various algorithms available for selecting the features then uh, we start working on that so we look at what are the various filters available what are the data wrappers then uh, when we are designing a, a model then there are models like decision tree random forest so these are various examples we look at and then as an example we take one uh, uh, live uh, problem like a recommendation system so we build here uh, the whole situation and uh, try to create the whole system then uh, we come to the next problem where the data size is too big the number of parameters number of columns are really too many and that's going to de degrade our uh, computation so the larger the number of dimension the large will be the space requirement the large will be the time requirement and with both space and time uh, grow exponentially with the dimensions so the more columns the higher is the dimension so if you talk about uh, 100 columns then we are working with the 100 dimension problem now you can understand what a 100 dimension problem is and in the 100 dimension problem you have some millions of data points so your uh, data millions of data are spread into a space which is having 100 of dimension then you can imagine what a minuscule uh, number of data points are available in such a big world then uh, for extracting some meaning out of this small number becomes difficult then what uh, best we can do is instead of increasing the number of samples better try to reduce the dimension instead of working on hundreds of dimensions cut down to a smaller number of dimensions so instead of 100 if you can cut down to 10 then the available points in 10 dimensions can uh, give us some meaning so we can continue with that so there are various methods like uh, singular value decomposition principal component analysis and all that once we understand uh, this all and we can uh, uh, work with one uh, example to understand what exactly we learnt in this feature generation, feature selection, dimensionality reduction and all that. This whole thing we can uh, apply using one real time example that is uh, to build our own recommendation system. So what a recommendation system is? It's a one where uh, uh, you, you have seen that uh, if you look for uh, any movie so if you search in uh, Netflix like thing then looking at your past uh, history it will tell that you may be interested in this movie uh, next uh, to watch and all that so it recommends what to do so if you are uh, working on uh, any shopping uh, app then looking at your uh, shopping pattern it will recommend that what you would like to shop next and all that so this are the things which look back at your data and try to understand your mood and then can recommend what could be your next uh, favorite item so that uh, you can you will be uh, forced emotionally to purchase or it will uh, you don't have to search it only gets uh, 
and say that uh, maybe this is what you are looking for next so i have already done this job for you and this is available these models are available so just uh, have a look on that so these all are the various things of uh, recommendation system so this uh, solving this problem uh, helps us in uh, realizing what all the we did in all these three modules then getting to the fourth module which is uh, titled data visualization and data exploration now we start with the importance of uh, a visualization of the data then why do we require data wrangling the various tools and libraries available for visualization we take a look at that and then we start uh, looking at various types of uh, plots it may be a comparison plot so you used to compare the various data so it may be line chart bar chart radar chart and so on or it may be relation plot so like scatter plot bubble plot and all that or it may be talking about composition so in a given data how much of each type it is made up of it may be a pie chart stack chart and stack area chart venn diagram all these are going to convey this the composition of uh, the data then you can talk about distribution plots like uh, you can use uh, the histogram density plot box plot violin plots are some examples which explain how the data is distributed then geological plots like dot dot map floro plot uh, map connection map and at the end we try to ask a question what makes a good visualization so in understanding all this we can just check it what makes a good visualization then finally get to the fifth module where we try to apply this in real time all these uh, earlier four uh, modules we just looked at what all possible things are there now we just apply and the path used for applying is a tool called matplotlib so it just uh, gives a overview of various plots available in this uh, tool then uh, pie plot basics like uh, how to create figure how to close a figure how to format the strings how to plot it then uh, uh, the data is there when the data is of large size then we need to put it in the tabular form the tabular data we can call it as a data frame so when we are working with the tabular data the best uh, tool would be using pandas so if you are using pandas then how to plot these things so how to display the figures how to save the figures when you are working with the pandas we look at it then about uh, when you try to plot the uh, things then just plot doesn't uh, serve the purpose you need to explain what exactly you are talking about so you need to put the title of the plot you need to say what are the uh, axis uh, labels are there what x axis represents here what y axis represents here what the red colors represent here so for that you need uh, labels titles text annotations legend so many things are required so that uh, the uh, visual effect is total so once that whole thing is uh, seen the whole situation can be understood billions of uh, lines of data can be compressed into a half a page and uh, with appropriate labels titles text annotations legends color colors and all that it can be explained the whole data can be explained and can be made visual just half a page so just half a page can be used or just half page is sufficient to explain one big world so that's a uh, effect of uh, 
a plotting effect of uh, uh, this visualization techniques then basic uh, plots available in matplotlib how to plot a bar chart how to plot a pie chart how to plot a stacked bar chart and all that various uh, instructions used uh, in matplotlib to plot these things is what we need to see then about histogram by box plot scatter plot bubble plot then uh, coming to layouts so in one uh, paper or one sheet if you want to show more than one plot then how can you do it so we can convert that into subplots and in each subplot you can publish one of the informations then how to uh, make the tight layout radar charts and all details so finally how to work with the images basic image operations then how do you write mathematical expressions on to the plots and all that how all these things can be done is what uh, we look at uh, in this last unit so that's uh, come on uh, let's dive into data and visualize them so are you ready oh yes then get set and go so we get into the world of data and try to understand the data through visualization techniques and understand what data science has in it to give to us so that's it for now thank you